Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. What is the advantage that Satan can have over men? Our being ignorant of his devices is an advantage to Satan. This is the Bible. We are starting tonight. That the Bible says whoever by any means is ignorant of the operation of darkness and how Satan operates to afflict the saints, you have given Satan, no matter who you are, you have given him an advantage. He said, lest Satan should get an advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his devices, his methodology, his system of operation. That means if we, for any reason, become careless about meticulously studying the operation of Satan, and the way he can afflict and even subjugate the saints the bible says the apostle speaking that it can become an advantage think how many families think how many churches brothers and sisters think how many well-meaning pastors think how many people who call upon the name of the lord day and night have given satan an advantage not by inviting him directly by allowing the deception that paying attention to the operation of Satan is not spirituality and we have given him an advantage. We have not been able to interpret the happenings in our lives and we have not understood these things and so we continue to try. We continue to fight a fight that is in ignorance with defeat being imminent but then the Bible says less Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant we are not ignorant that's the key to closing the door we are not ignorant we are not ignorant paul said i am not ignorant but i have also taught you so we that means there are some people who are ignorant we are not ignorant of his devices last week we began to teach on deliverance as a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Christ over Satan, over demons and over the powers of darkness concerning our lives I did teach us last week that there are three levels of satanic influences, I'm just doing a quick recap for the sake of those who were not here that the first is called deception and that all men can be deceived including the saints it is possible deception we explore that and then the next level is manipulation and control and I told us that this is the realm of the mind where Satan can take advantage of your understanding of your thinking and manipulate your understanding and the third we saw that it was um, complete influence and control that's what we call possession where an individual is completely under the influence of Satan, such as the case of the madman in Gadara in Mark chapter 5. 
and then we explain a number of things the teachings are available you can get them and i told us that the greatest strength of satan is the flesh the flesh the flesh so i'll talk a little bit about the flesh and then we'll share something um i struggle to do my best to see that we exhaust this teaching tonight but i i do not know there is so much to say as i was just preparing and studying i was wondering what part do i include and what part do i not include this subject is so broad you can have even part 1 to 30 and not repeat anything there is so much that the saints do not know so we'll see how god will help us tonight why are we teaching this number one it is a revelation of the mercy and the love of god to us to grant us access to these truths number two because the season has come for us to possess our possessions and according to obadiah 1 17 it says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possessions are we together so let's look at the flesh what exactly is the flesh seeing that it is one of the greatest weapons of satan i'll touch on it um, very briefly and then i want to teach us something very powerful romans chapter 17 and verse chapter 7 and verse 18 romans 7 and verse 18 I like you to read with me one two read for I know that in me that is my flesh dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good I find not who is speaking who is speaking this is not a baby Christian speaking this is not someone who just got born again yesterday this is not one student of some rabbi this is one who has been granted access he's 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 opening the tragedy of the flesh and the the imminent doom that befalls anyone who chooses to walk in this realm that the bible calls the flesh what is the flesh he says for i know that in me he's not just talking about his body necessarily that is my flesh dwelleth what no good thing if you fail an exam and you get 37 you pass some you just didn't pass enough but if you get zero there's no possibility the bible says the flesh there is no good thing not some no good thing that means if you dwell in the realm of the flesh you have given satan the biggest advantage over your life it doesn't matter what else you do you have submitted yourself for defeat what is the flesh write this down the flesh is defined as a nature of living thinking and acting that is against the ways of God the flesh a nature of living thinking and acting that is against the ways of God so it affects your life it affects your mind it affects your body every part of you are we together the flesh every time the bible talks of the flesh or the old man has different expressions the the understanding is twofold this is not my major discussion tonight but i want to at least do justice there the the first dimension is what the bible calls the sin nature the man who is not regenerate the bible no matter how innocent you are in fact here's how the prophet puts it he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me so he didn't have to do anything directly the very nature of the fallen man 
one who has not encountered the life the zoe life of god the bible defines that that person born and living in the flesh so the sin nature are we together now the remedy for that is not counseling the remedy for that is the deliverance that we call salvation i hope you know salvation is deliverance yes salvation there is the special deliverance to remedy that nature you can't correct it it's not a nature that you correct it's not a nature that you renew it has to be taken away completely through the substitutionary work of jesus christ only a genuine encounter with the son of god the bible says and this is the record remember that god hath given us what eternal life so way and it says this life is in his son he says so that whosoever has the son has that life he said whoever does not have the son doesn't have that life so there is no assumption as to whether that nature is in you or not if you have not encountered the son no matter how you convince yourself zoe is not in you you may have money you may have education you may feel good about yourself but the nature the very nature just because you feel good about yourself doesn't mean you are free listen listen we're addressing something that is spiritual in context just because you feel you have never done anything wrong in your life doesn't mean you are free are we together now many times our minds and our consciences will deceive us into thinking because we look so far and think we are innocent and then we believe that the innocence brought the nature by itself no there is no assumption about that nature it is taken away only by the blood of the eternal covenant the blood of jesus christ himself and this life is in his son so that whosoever has the son has eternal life if you are not born again that life is not in you period if you are not born again that nature is still at work in you that is the chiefest authorization of satan greater than even any covenant that you have willfully brought yourself under the government of satan that's why i say i set before you the choice is yours life and death I set before you blessing and cursing. I can only advise you. I can't force you. Choose life that you may live. One of the ways you choose life is to say, Lord, I, I, I submit to your government. I come willingly out of the government and the hold of Satan. Is deliverance. The name of that deliverance is salvation. As free and cheap as it is, you must participate in it. Otherwise, it will not work. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, the sin nature. But number two, the second dimension of the flesh. And, and that, is, that is the one that I think af affects us because I know that a greater number of us here by the grace of God are born again. We've given our life to Christ. And so based on the authority of the word, we know that that nature is gone. But the second, the second dimension of what the Bible calls the flesh is a stronghold write it down a stronghold a stronghold a stronghold in our minds that is fortified by the presence of demon spirits a stronghold this is flesh now the bible is talking about a stronghold in our minds that is fortified listen carefully fortified by the presence of demon spirits are we together motivated by self-centeredness vainglory and self-exaltation a stronghold in our minds fortified by the presence of demon spirits that is motivated by self-centeredness write it down self-centeredness vain glory vain glory and then number three self-exaltation that's what the bible calls the flesh so when the bible speaks of the flesh within the context of a believer he's talking of a stronghold that is present not in your spirit 
a stronghold that is present within your mind within the solical realm are we together now that is fortified the fact that it is not can you see that even in your mind demons are still there follow me you will be blessed tonight motivated by self-centeredness remember my teaching christ-centeredness motivated by self-centeredness motivated by vain glory motivated by self-exaltation this the bible says that nature that nature there is no good thing in that nature that means whoever entertains that nature to control and govern your life the result is already predictable there is no good thing no matter how much deliverance gallons and gallons of anointing oil no matter how much prayer and fasting no matter what you do if this nature is allowed unattended to then paul already gives you your faith are you seeing the reason why many deliverance ministries for instance it looks like it's an endless struggle of attempting to do something you can pray dry you can pray all kinds you can do all kinds and and find out that in the midst of it it looks like forever you are casting spirits it looks like forever you are casting spirits it's like a journey of consistently casting spirits this is it and satan knows satan does not mind entertaining you during your deliverance session for as long as he finds out that this is unattended to you can do every other thing you want to do he will be glad to be represented and flatter you into thinking you are so anointed whereas the major issue has not been dealt with a stronghold a stronghold and satan has taken advantage of the church listen very carefully because we have been taught that a believer cannot be possessed that is true but possession is not the only way spirits participate in your life i'm going to be showing you now so we mean that just because a believer is not possessed every other thing that happens is just his thinking that is not working well uh, leave satan out and we have allowed satan to mess up our our understanding the construction of our beliefs and you find out that although you know the zoe life is in your spirit how come in the soul realm you are so helpless to him to the point that it even looks like your salvation is a lie are you ready to follow me on this journey tonight the flesh the bible gives us let me just tidy it up so that we we'll leave this and and just go very quickly the bible tells us what to do with the flesh galatians chapter 5 we'll read 15 to 17 then we'll jump to colossians chapter 3 1 and 2 16 and 7 galatians chapter 5 16 and 17 16 let's start from 16 galatians 5 16 this i say then the same paul is speaking what is the remedy for the flesh walk ye it didn't say receive the spirit walk ye in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh he's telling you this remedy you are not just going to say flesh I'm, I'm tired of you no he's saying you must find a way whatever this is walk ye in the spirit and then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh 17 he says for the flesh lusted against the spirit notice what is the flesh attacking talk to me what is the flesh attacking that the flesh will look for everything the spirit of god has created for you to do and that's what it fights the assignment of the flesh is to cause you to consistently violate the ways of the spirit and the spirit also that means when you are spirit controlled you will find yourself fighting the attributes of the flesh and the bible said these two these two are contrary the one to another so that ye cannot do the things that ye would let me explain to you what this means in any case you are not just allowed to do what you want there has to be one of them 
so you are under conflict today you are this tomorrow you are that and paul is saying let me explain to you that these vacillations is as a result of a war the war is an attempt by the flesh or the spirit to gain dominance over your life that you feel so prayerful today and tomorrow you just sit down and say okay, to hell with this Jesus self I'm not even sure Paul is saying it's not your fault I'm explaining to you at the point you were saying to hell you are still not on your own are we together now another force another agency you are only executing what that agency has planted within you mm. the flesh People talk so much about the power of God. They talk so much about freedom, yet they never talk about the flesh. And so Satan doesn't mind our fasting. Satan doesn't mind our prayer because he knows that that stronghold is there. And what a joy to Satan when he finds out that you advise yourself that just because I am in Christ, automatically, the only thing that is left is just for me to keep receiving scripture. And as I receive scripture, I will change automatically. It looks very spiritual, but I will be showing you it's a dimension of deception. Because many of us have been doing it obediently and it has not been working. As always, we have been trained to keep quiet and, and, and not to be honest enough. So we make it look like I'm, I'm okay, everything is fine. No, you are not fine. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 and then we'll go to 1 and 2 then 16 and 17 look at this Paul is now buttressing on what he means by walking in the spirit remember he already told us that when you walk in the spirit you can conquer the flesh one of the ways you walk in the spirit is what read with me one to read if ye then be risen with Christ that means if it is true that you claim that you are risen with Christ it says seek those things which are where above seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of the father verse 2 set your mind set your affection now he uses something very interesting your affection your affinity your desire your longing set it like you set a thermometer set it to make sure that it is focused on the things above and not on the things that are of the earth are we together and then verse 16 says let the word of christ dwell in you richly now notice it says richly in all wisdom that's a very serious part we neglect it's not just enough for the word of god to dwell in you in terms of verses just he said no wisdom it should be constructed in a way that profits you the word of christ can dwell in you in a way that you are just accumulating scripture but it's not profiting you it says there must be a construction of the word of god in such a way and a manner that that word is done in wisdom then teaching and admonishing one another in psalms spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart from the lord last verse 17 and then we are done now watch this and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do it in the name of the lord jesus christ he's teaching us the various strategies that can help you to walk in the spirit one of it he says set your affections number two do all you do in the name as touching the government and the office that you represent walk in the consciousness of the fact that you are under an authority he's teaching here of the various ways that you can set your mind believers hear me let me tell you sincerely no matter how much prayer and how much fasting and how much casting of a demon that you cast out of someone if that person has made up his mind to be carnal and fleshly and not set your mind on spiritual things i hate to be a bearer of bad news but you only succeeded in wasting your time i give you a guarantee satan has infinite ways of returning back to that person the bible tells us when a spirit leaves a man it doesn't go and say okay i've even satan left jesus for a while he came back again to find out jesus have you been discouraged so far i left you when you were about to start ministry if satan left jesus for a while whatever makes you think that just because he left you five years ago he has gone and said okay serve god with all mm -mm. 
is waiting for you at the corner of discouragement is waiting for you where your money finishes he's waiting for you where you have a bad news or where you lose a loved one here he comes again because he knows that these things have a way of seeming to bring us down from that that echelon of spirituality it now brings us down and satan comes the bible says walk ye in the spirit i know you don't like what i'm teaching tonight but it's a powerful formula as simple as it is it's a powerful formula the flesh that stronghold the mistake that many people are now trying to make you see in correcting look at this come there is a difference between transformation happens in the realm of the mind but transformation is spiritual it's a miracle let's not reduce transformation to just the realm of scientology where we say put formula a add b to it no 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 principles are not just scientific formulas principles are spiritual laws that are backed up with the very power and presence of god get this please because when you study online and go around you find out that um sometimes if you are not careful you can just sit down and all you are doing is searching for laws at random just because something is a law and it works you just carry it and throw it in your mind and convince yourself that just because you put in an information that looks superior to what you already know automatically you just go no laws on their own don't drive spirits transformation is a powerful miracle it's another kind of deliverance the first dimension of transformation is not receiving the word the first dimension is the spirit entities that guard that stronghold must be taken away that deliverance must happen to you you can be a pastor prophet apostle bishop whatever you can be and flatter yourself that because of the 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 physical paraphernalia that is around your ministry you are free no you will need that deliverance you can pray in tongues non-stop every day for many years and that stronghold is just quietly watching you you reign you reign hello king you reign you reign talk about deliverance now there are a number of things I want to teach you about deliverance let's talk about demons let's talk a little bit i have to if i don't talk about demons um i'm looking at my course content here can we talk a little about demons matthew chapter 13 verse 24 to 30 let's go to the parable of jesus i want us to study a bit on on demons look at this another parable look up please he put forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven that means the operation of the kingdom of heaven is likened to this a man which sowed good seed everybody say a man everybody say seed one more time say a man say seed he sowed good seed the fact that the bible specified good seed already is a message are we together remember my message during the prayer and fasting 25 but while men slept 
wild man did what his enemy came also having a seed his enemy didn't come with a knife his enemy didn't come with a gun his enemy watched what he sowed and came with his own too watch this and the bible says he came and sowed tears among the wheat and did what and went his way he represented his presence with the seed are we together now he went away when he dropped that seed there he didn't need to stay there again because he knew that the seed was a replica of himself but when the blade was sprung up so that which was a seed now became something else and brought forth fruit then appeared tears also so the servants of the household that came and said unto him sir did did not thou sow good seed in thy field in other words ah, didn't you get born again where did this come from are you not a pastor's child are you not a, 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 a prophet's daughter? Are you not? Is it not you that was baptized yesterday? Where did this come from? From whence then had it tears? 28. And he said, An enemy has done this. And then his servant told him, Will thou that we gather them up? And then he says, Allow it. That's, that's what 29 and 30 says. Lest while we gather up the tears, we root up the wheat in them. And then verse 30 let them both grow together until harvest in the time of the harvest i will say to the reapers gather first the tears that means something will happen in the time of harvest that will show the difference but as it is now you can't see it and if in an attempt watch this if you understand this mystery you will know why you can be doing many things and god will not talk to you about it it doesn't mean that he doesn't see it is because if he wants to circumcise you at that level it will affect your growth process so bad so he will be patient with you to just grow you can be an arrogant man and God will never say anything about your arrogance so you will think that you are all right just because he's not talking about it a day will come as you keep walking with him when he sees that you are now mature to undergo that level of spiritual circumcision he will take you back to the subject of arrogance and you will be surprised that you are in that level of height and now God is dealing with the issue of arrogance the seed the seed this, this demon spirits that we're talking about, we have to understand them. You hear people say demons everywhere. Many of you here in Koinonia and around, you've seen demons come out of people. You've seen their violence. You've seen their aggression. Sometimes you hear people speak, you know, another spirit. Many of you watch TV around or go for meetings. Where you, Who are they? Where, where do they come from? Genesis chapter 3. Let's see how we can look at it. Oh, Jesus. Is God blessing us already? Genesis chapter 3. Give us verse 15. Genesis chapter 3. Let me just touch on it. And that God will grant us grace. Now, by way of introduction to this, I hope you know that Paul the Apostle, Paul the Apostle did not leave us in the dark. As to the fact that when the Bible says darkness is a combination of many things I hope you know that when the Bible says darkness and it says spirits dark spirits is not just one a consummation of just a group of demons it is the summation of every spirit entity and every kind of spiritual organogram that is antagonistic to the ways of God because I'll, as I'll be showing you there are many there are many this is the Lord now speaking with the woman after their fall. I'm just saving time. That's why I said we should go to verse 15. If you're with me, say amen. And I will put enmity. Who is speaking here? God. Between thee and the woman. Between Satan and the woman. God is speaking to them both now. I will put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman. He would have stopped there and then we'll understand. But then he says, I will also put enmity between what? Thy seed and her seed. So the, the person he's talking to has seed. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He's talking to Satan 
as one who has seed the capacity to multiply himself and his agenda hi and he looks at the woman you don't talk to a woman about seed because you know from biology that women don't have seed they receive seed so the thing confused satan god why are you now talking about her seed where is it going to come from that's why the moment cain came satan believed that cain was that seed and tried to attack him from that day till moses till everybody till john the baptist once satan sees a male that a woman is giving birth to he starts pursuing them because he suspects that that may be the seed are you getting the point now between your seed and her seed now questions we have seen the seed of the woman we are part of that seed correct where is the seed of satan because the bible lets us know very clearly god himself speaking that as the woman is multiplying her own seed this spirit entity is multiplying his own seed too are we together genesis chapter 6 Genesis chapter 6 and it came to pass I'm fast forwarding now it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the surface of the earth listen carefully it says and daughters were born unto them what happened verse 2 that the sons of God the Hebrew word there is benign Elohim it's not just sons of God like it was an error in translation it's not like sons of God like believers no are we together like like progenitors those who were part of his creation these were a class of angels that this class of angels came and saw the daughters of men do you know who these angels were these angels were not just the exalted angels because I hope you know that by the time the angels that fought with lucifer fell from heaven the ones that came down with him adam was not there adam's story and genesis one was not there they had fallen in a particular dispensation are you getting what i'm saying now mm. so by the time god is creating adam or recreating the earth and making adam there are already inhabitants in the earth satan alongside the myriads of fallen angels are you getting what i'm saying now mm. and because spirits don't die in the context of cessation of life i will tell you what the death of a spirit is i i, I told you i was going to tell you but spirits don't die in the context of ceasing from breathing and ceasing from movement the moment adam came to start another race these spirits were looking for a way to find expression are we together now it's a very serious thing and the bible says that while they were voyaging around the earth all of a sudden they saw the daughters of men that they were fair to look upon it's a scriptural way of saying they were very beautiful are we together that means those angels had feelings hello it's not all the classes of angels that you know theologically there are all kinds of arguments whether angels have the, uh, the ability to reproduce or not and we, we see it here that the angels saw the daughter of men the daughters of men and they took them wives that means they could marry they came down and saw beautiful ladies like you looking at me now and the angels chose they advised themselves he said look let's marry these women verse 3 and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for seeing that his flesh is there shall be 120 verse 4 there were what now watch this the bible just tells us that a come darling an angel are we together now a fallen angel benign elohim all of a sudden sees human people pure humans and the bible says took them to wives and all of a sudden we now see the manifestation of a species that the bible calls them what i'm trying to trace the origin of demons for you that giants until this time there were no demons on earth 
there were fallen angels there were other dark spirits that had been in other civilizations but not demons these giants were in the earth the bible says that when the sons of god came into the daughters of men you know what that means and they bear what children that means that the seed those fallen angels had seed within them and that their seeds got these women pregnant and they gave birth to these giants who were mighty men of old men of renown are you following my story now so we trace that these women were minding their business all of a sudden these beings come that there is a possibility ah goodness so spirits can get physical women pregnant so we see that there's no argument there are we together this information is useful we need it because that's how jesus came into the world are we together now listen carefully jesus came into the world how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man joseph has not finished paying my dowry don't embarrass me and he said no a spirit is coming from heaven i will show you this is the mystery ah goodness i'm already excited let me just take it easy so these spirits came and all of a sudden when the women gave birth to children the children started growing unusually they had features that were superhuman it was clear that these spirits were not pure humans the seed of lucifer in those children started causing them the bible says god saw that the wickedness of man this spirit started introducing attributes upon the earth men were not that wicked all of a sudden there was a fabrication of different levels of wickedness and then the people in the earth ah, who are these beings that can be so wicked that means a normal man has a maximum level to which his heart can conceive evil if evil goes beyond that level something else is responsible for that level of heartlessness follow me because as i taught you this seed is still on earth today are we together the bible says that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually this was not the case now man had become so depraved the bible says and it repented the lord that he had made the man in the earth and it grieved his heart now watch this thank you darling did you know the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that i have made them just stop there god is regretting these spirits have found their way back into this adamic civilization they were there casted now with the ability to reproduce they found a way of creating continuity for themselves because remember the law of territory if you don't have a body these angels these spirits because they are not demons it is demons that don't have bodies angels have bodies that's why they could come to even meet angels can translate themselves into physical bodies is that true remember the angels that came to abraham they didn't come as ghosts flying they were human beings this was what caused the flood of noah are you getting what i'm saying now the flood of noah was a system of judgment that god needed to annihilate that entire race the question is the giants let me use you again the giant children that were born by these angels and this when the flood happened because spirits don't die in terms of cessation of living the bodies now died and the spirits are you getting the point now the spirits of all those rays the name of those giants as you know theologically speaking is called the nephilims are we together now this disembodied spirits because every time a spirit is not in a body what happens it becomes restless these spirits they can't go to heaven they can't go to hell and they float within the circumference of earth and the second heavens and that is the reason why these spirits today are those we call demons listen carefully 
the demon spirits that you call are the spirits of these nephilims the sons before demons came there was already darkness listen carefully before demons came they were already fallen angels the fallen angels and the daughters of men produce what we call demons disembodied spirits now watch this look up i want to prove a few things for you i, I hope that you are getting what are you get are we are we still together let me just know that we're together do you know that fallen angels cannot possess men there is no record in scripture from genesis to revelation where a spirit was inside a man are we together now and then they ask who are you and he says um i'm angel so 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 and so no no it may look like it is the spirit but those i will tell you what their office is because those fallen angels are still working today but they are not the ones inside men are we together those disembodied spirits are the ones who move and i hope you know that the disembodied spirits that fell are by far more than the number of human beings on earth that's why ten thousand of them will not mind finding accommodation in one man there is a desperate need for accommodation among those demon spirits till today look at look at how they cry when you want to cast them out that means they don't <laughs> listen are you seeing the extreme violence now please don't feel bad many of you have been delivered many of you will be delivered this night but listen notice that you will see a kind quiet person brother or sister and all of a sudden when those spirits are provoked by the power of god it will take five people to suddenly hold one person you see the way people are rolling on the floor there is no power you try rolling like that by yourself and see what happens another entity this disembodied spirit to the point that when jesus was about to cast them they begged him they said jesus you know our condition you are not in ignorance as to what is happening to us where do you because they know it's hard to find a body that can allow you to be comfortable that's why when they find it they go straight to the realm of your mind and create a system that makes sure even if they evict them they can still come back please understand what i'm teaching you and you will be free you will experience victory and you will possess your possession demon spirits they are everywhere today as i'm talking now there are demon spirits around hoping and waiting where will i get accommodation now are we together now where will i get accommodation now this is what it means for spirits to die when they say demon spirit should die is the restlessness that is created by exiting it from a mortal body it is an intense state of torture no spirit no spirit is like putting you inside water and dropping you there that's exactly what you do when that's why they cry and they beg they make sure they don't leave they negotiate all kinds of things jesus have you come to cast us shall we have a time now jesus said go say let's look at they drowned the swine they were so desperate for bodies they entered pigs for a few minutes just so that they can find a place to rest the pigs were entering water they said yes let's just be rested before you enter the water you see why satan hates deliverance you may not know what it is that is the reason why when you cast out devils you are in trouble because satan will mobilize any kind of attack on your life at on anything he knows what is happening is God helping us are we understanding something so this spirit but there are other kinds of spirit I hope you know that the fallen angels that fell with Lucifer are not the only angels that have fallen <laughs> there are many group of offenses there are others who fell so bad they are in chains now they are not even allowed to be featured in that's the level of wickedness those guys are more wicked than satan himself what they did to god we'll find out when we get to heaven that god and they they were cast down not to the earth satan was cast down and left in the earth 
but these spirits were taken straight to the bottomless pit and were bound there with chains because for the sake of the elect they were not left on earth what would they have done that means even satan would have been afraid of them I'm demystifying this thing to you whether it comes as occultism whether it comes as Ogoni there is a central system of operation is when it comes to execution that all those variations come the foundation of all of this is this spirit finding a resting place and when this <sighs> these angels watch their children called demons move around with no bodies in intense torture and so they say let's work together we will coordinate you while you enter the people will tell you what to do and so paul said wow so there are principalities there are powers there are rulers then there are others who don't operate in the earth realm they are spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places they all coordinate themselves one one demon spoke on behalf of ten thousand of them it was when jesus asked him who are you he now said we are many oh forget that you are hearing only my voice there is a an intelligent organogram brothers and sisters if one human body can host ten thousand demons then it's important for you to listen one demon one body can be so powerful if one body can host God why can't it host demons that a man's body can be the temple of the living God let me just compose myself and get somewhere because if you don't understand this what are you delivering you see where we miss it we just come and tell somebody there's a spirit oh yeah we bend his head and just turn him around Oh yeah, you must come out. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'll hug you after I'm done with my example. And you turn his head round, and the guy just says, "Man, let me just quietly fall for this guy to leave me in peace." And he just falls down, and you you tell him to say thank you, Jesus. He repeats after you. You get up and you are happy, and the demon spirit say, "Wow, what ignorance! Advantage, advantage." Demon spirits can dwell in your spirit demon spirits can dwell in your mind demon spirits can dwell in your body when you tell somebody you cast a demon it just comes out you don't know where it came out from it will re you the same way it comes out from your spirit your soul and your body physically it will look the same it takes discernment to know what happened and the authority of scripture that guides you if that person you are delivering is a believer then you know certainly it must not be from his spirit because he that is joined to christ is one spirit are we together but that does not mean this is where many of us have been surprised because for many years you believe that no these demons cannot find expression you came for koinonia to your surprise praise and worship was going on and all of a sudden you are feeling as if somebody is drawing your clothes you are saying what is happening the next thing you are sweeping the ground you are waking up after 10 minutes what is wrong and you are a pastor and you are, you are, you are a, 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 a prayer leader and your members were watching and say oh god prayer leader what i hope that this impact we received impartation a night before this deliverance so what really entered us no you don't stigmatize people a spiritual childishness to think just because a demon was casted out that no 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 you don't do that the fact that you are being delivered is a sign that you are in mount zion it's not something that should make you ashamed the, the, that means you have gotten to a place where the light and the power of god is forcing those spirits to be uncomfortable it's a thing of joy You have to understand these demon spirits because they are everywhere there are many ways they can enter that's why they are desperate you can know that these spirits are let me tell you this those spirits have on you their characteristics you know that they are in or around your life because whatever they produce in your life is abnormal are we together 
a demon spirit can find expression and you can start having abnormal passion for food you can eat the food of 10 people it's called gluttony it's not a medical condition the spirit is eating through you even you you know that by myself i cannot eat this kind of food listen listen this spirit now enters you and begins to manifest an unusual passion then you marry one wife the spirit is not satisfied with one woman you now say oh let me just be careful this is my one and only wife the spirit says no way and all of a sudden you add 12 more and the spirit he says more you add 12 more and the spirit says you are delaying me let's let's switch to to the point that the spirit can be patient if he doesn't find women it will make a man like a man it's not normal these are the spirits behind it listen very carefully that's what happened in the days of noah these spirits you see are not weak they are not foolish they are not stupid the moment they find a body they start manifesting their characteristic the same way when the holy spirit finds a body all of a sudden an anointing you shouldn't have i shouldn't know your name where did it come it's obvious that it's not me something has taken charge of my faculties and is revealing to me something that i should not know ordinary me if i stand close to you maybe if we fight you will even beat me but all of a sudden i will lift my hand and this guy is on the floor now is that me no the same way i'm supposed to give you peace ordinarily but because of the demon spirit in me when i come near you your life must scatter it's not me hear me married people this is a mistake people are coming with forces and influences they don't even know and you find uh, this is the mistake that prophets make again listen carefully especially if you're in the prophetic here because they now look and say oh your wife is a witch she's not a witch for some reason she's she's hosting a habitation of certain spirit beings that are creating an effect even her she will tell you i don't know why everybody i come near if it's their business it dies if it's everything it dies are you seeing why some of you the moment somebody comes to say i love you i want to go and see your parents the spirit in him will say am i not already there so what do you want to do now tragedies listen very carefully those spirits feed on things and they put in you desires that will continue to feed them while they remain that's why you can sit down and they will wake you in the night to carry your laptop and type something you should not watch and you are watching you hate what you are watching but the spirit is feeding on it it is the atmosphere that will keep it there your majesty your majesty that come to you in the dream world they carry the face of a man they carry the face of a woman they carry the face of an object a loved one it doesn't matter they are doing something to you all of a sudden you want to give someone a job and you say by tomorrow please come and collect the job you go to bed notice all of a sudden they have come the dream will carry different you may see yourself in primary school second it doesn't matter what form it comes they are still the ones listen to me all of a sudden they may come and molest you they may come and do whatever they want to do and you stand up in the morning to you you don't know what happened you dress very smart sir i've come to collect my employment letter and the man will say if i see you here you had the testimony of our mommy here how can you tell somebody else this is what has made many of your helpers to leave you they will promise you send me your account and all of a sudden you go to bed and those spirits are here we don't know the bible said lest satan should take an advantage of you for we are not ignorant ignorant 
this is the number one cause number one cause number one cause of barrenness number one cause of impotency the jealousy of those spirits the very jealousy of those spirits with all honor to our doctors i love doctors but i'm telling you this is it can i surprise you i want to tell you something that many of you may not believe i hope and pray that you may believe it i that's why you see i struggle with tonight's teaching it is possible for a woman to carry a seed that is for both her husband and these spirits i wish i'm not the one teaching this sometimes this 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 work is very hard sometimes it's true go back to our villages and hear what our great grandparents with divination used to say sometimes they will see a child and stand and say no let me look at this child and look at this child and look at this child and say no something is wrong and this child is born with unusual trouble and unusual abilities usually doesn't last for too long and just dies and goes but within that 12 to 15 years the trouble that that child causes for the family what can this one is not a deliverance issue this is another seed that is not human can i tell you this don't feel bad we are praying don't feel bad this is how fibroid is formed what you call fibroid is the aberration of the intercourse between these spirits are we together now an attempt for these spirits that's why it grows in the same place where a baby should grow as a baby is growing is growing too and notice that 90 percent of the time it will kill the baby yet you say it's not alive from the womb already ask jacob and esau that from the womb the children were already there they were already fighting ask jesus and john you call them they are just fetuses whereas there was communication going on when mary met with um elizabeth the babies too met with themselves how are you how are you well now we're coming oh i will come before you make sure you do it nice they were interacting please sit down when you know these things you will appreciate the power of god and the victory of christ i know this may look like a messy teaching tonight but just allow me tidy this up and then you will walk back and now find out that nothing just happens nothing watch this these demon spirits till today until jesus comes they are searching for bodies to find expression they are in our fathers that's why our fathers behave unusually they are in our mothers that's why they behave unusually wife that's the mystery behind the stubbornness and your wise decisions of your husband he may be well-meaning notice that most of those people a time can come they are calm and understanding and peaceful and cooperative and then suddenly something comes when you are bringing someone out of a prison cell there's a sign here that you will never steal anybody's thing you will sign and say i won't do anything say oh yeah be born again i'm I, I, I will be a serious person i will even be serious for the first two days he will go to the farm doing well until that spirit now knows there is a stronghold are we together i will teach you this on deliverance there is already a doorway that allows it so the spirit goes on vacation as that brother is in the farm he will make another person annoy him because all these attributes of the flesh are doors with a simple anger it returns it has entered the guy doesn't know all of a sudden the guy gets up and says you hit me and beats him and kills him he's back to the prison he's wondering what am i doing on my way back to the prison the spirit has come back to his house because when a spirit leaves a man it doesn't wave at you it allows for some time the frustration of a lack of habitation will make it come back and say that womb i left let me go back and find out what is there oh there is a child there now that home i went there is joy now i need a space for myself and the moment they find expression they will have to start executing their own attributes 
have you not been surprised look at those who steal if they are under the influence of that demon hide anything anywhere the person will stand is like word of knowledge he will just look around and say Can't lift that carpet you will carry the money there he doesn't know it's true i'm telling you this you know i'm not lying you hide the money anywhere one day you hide it inside the ceiling he will just stand and stand and look up the spirit is saying look up that's where it is I know I know a true story a true story of a couple I counseled some years ago they were about to get married all of a sudden from nowhere very wonderful lady who loves the Lord the lady brought a report crying that they said she was positive with HIV ah, she even me I was surprised because a lady that I know very well behaved lady I said what happened where did that one come from and all of a sudden when I was looking in the realm of the spirit God just opened my eyes and I, as soon as I touched that spirit something strange happened now I'm, I'm not saying you should go out and create trouble but something strange happened the spirit started manifesting and speaking around and he said at the point of the test it entered the doctor doctors you are my friends I'm just being thank God you are born again we just finished an outreach there are many things that if we do not know there are many people carrying reports that are not true there are many people carrying things that are not true it is this same spirits that appear what is HIV HIV is called AIDS Abi acquired is acquired meaning it's not within you it came from somewhere acquired immunodeficiency syndrome I'm, I, I hope I'm right where do you think it came from where do you think cancer came from when you understand this you will know why all of a sudden Jacob did something do you know I will be showing you Jacob slept and had a dream and Jacob saw where the males that pregnanted the female goats came from he was in a dream he looked above and saw that all the males in the realm of the spirit were spotted Hi. <laughs> it was not Laban's males no they came from somewhere that's why it didn't matter what Laban said the results were manipulated from the realm of the spirit when you are assisted from the realm of the spirit it doesn't matter what the disadvantages are there is a system to change everything this is not my discussion this night but I don't don't tempt me to have to go and show you please that this spirit interactions must be there for Satan and demons to find expression no man just enters trouble like that and no man just comes out like that there must be that spirit interaction let me show you something you're tempting me for us to Genesis 30 let's look at it Genesis 30 25 we'll look at 25 to 43 Jesus thank you pray in the spirit please while we are opening this hallelujah look at this look at this let me talk about Jacob and Laban now I'm establishing a point here and it came to pass when Rachel was born Joseph that Jacob said to Laban send me away that I may go to my place and my country we're reading it's a long reading let's see how fast we can go just keep just keep projecting and let's go he said give me my wives and all of that and all of that go to 28 Jacob is discussing with Laban now and he said appoint me thy wages and I will give thee 29 we're reading down to 40 there about and he said thou knowest that I have served thee and how thy cattle was with me 30 for it was little which thou hast before I came and it is now increased to a multitude and the Lord had blessed thee who blessed thee talk to me who blessed thee the Lord has we'll see how that Lord did the blessing the Lord had blessed thee since my coming and now well shall I provide for my own house 31 and he said what shall I give thee Jacob he said don't give me anything if thou will do with this one thing I will again keep thy flock what is the one thing 32 I will pass through the flock today 
removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats and of such they shall be my hire so he's saying i will go round your ranch all the cows and the sheep that are spotted i will pick them at this point they were not many i hope you know that and then he says so shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come when it shall come for my hire you know this and that and that everyone that is not speckled or spotted he was saying that if you find it with me then take me as a thief are you getting the idea now the bible says so laban said behold i would that it might you know might be done according to your word 35 and he removed that day all the goats that were ring straight and spotted and so on and so forth and so forth go to verse 40 go to verse 40 jacob went on a journey there's uh, there's no time to prove it but you will see that jacob simply went on a journey for three days jacob returned back after three days and suddenly saw spotted calves he said no something is going on here the goats and cows and sheep were not pregnant the normal time that goats there because the males that got them pregnant were not part of the fold they came from somewhere the same way the bible never says jesus was pregnant for nine months no it's not on record that jesus was pregnant for nine months jacob did separate the lamb and set the faces of the flocks towards the ring stake and all you know all of this and he put his own flocks and put them you know this and that 41 and it came to pass whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive that jacob laid the rods before his eyes the eyes of the cattle in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods when we read to 43 we stop there but when the cattle were feeble he puts them not in so the feebler were labans and the stronger jacobs last verse 43 then we'll go to verse 41 and the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and made servants and men servants and camels and asses now go to chapter 31 let me search it here 31 from verse 10 to 13 genesis 31 read with me one to read and it came to pass at the time that the cattle had come i just jumped from verse one to nine verse one to nine was the frustration of of laban's sons they started saying so now jacob has taken everything what inheritance do we have and the bible is showing us how god assisted jacob to produce that result are you ready and it came to pass that at the time that the cattle conceived that i lifted up my eyes and saw where in a dream so jacob was dreaming and the dream now revealed what was happening that was not there physically what did he see in a dream i behold the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring staked speckled and i beheld i saw in my dream that there were some cattle that were making these ones to be pregnant that were not part of the are, are you with me now he's not awake oh he's seen in a dream 11 hmm. and the angel of the lord so the angel was there we know that there are angels and other cattle came from another realm Shabakatos kabalakata he spoke to me in a dream and he said jacob and i said here i am verse 12 mm. and he said lift now thy eyes and see all the rams an angel is showing him another ram somewhere that is not part of laban's flock all they needed was laban's females the males came from another realm the same way all the fallen angels needed was the females of men the males were the angels with their seed All the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring staked, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen, I had to introduce some other animals to come and give you speed of result because I have seen the wickedness of Laban. So I came to assist you with extraordinary result that is not of this realm. 13. I am the God of Bethel. This is why I'm doing it where you anointed with a pillar and where you vowed a vow unto me he said arise get thee out of this land 
and out of thy kindred jacob woke up and all of a sudden the males were not seen physically but when the females gave birth they were all speckled and laban said how did this thing happen but god said jacob let me show you so when you see a woman frying akara and building a house with that akara there is an assistance it, it cannot just be about ten thousand no the realm of the spirit came to assist men this is a testimony of this ministry this is a testimony of my life we are not alone he sent his angel there is the angel of his presence and if you don't believe what i just taught you the devil will destroy you and you will never now when you see unusual results you don't question it because i have shown you that heaven can assist men he said remember the bethel i am the god of bethel so was that angel an angel no i am the god i came to supervise your speed i have seen how laban mocked you and is it not me that said i will restore so let me do it now i will bring my own male cattle from everywhere are you seeing why the bible said the cattle on a thousand key where is it it's not a location on earth the cattle god has it the next time somebody gets a miracle alert and you are asking where did the money come from does that sound wise no lest satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant i have taught you now that the realm of the spirit can assist men the same way when you see so that you stop this counseling that doesn't make sense you see an unusual thief an unusual troublemaker a man who marries 11 wives and is not tired that man does not need counsel what's the name of that group that used to discipline men that social group social welfare even if you like report him to efcc there is a spirit a normal man should be satisfied with his wife alone the moment a spirit comes no unusual characteristics unusual attributes unusual wickedness when a man carries a knife and takes one of our little ones here and is slaughtering a baby like this my brother my sister that's not a normal human being a spirit is using his hands to hold a knife remember that when these spirits show up they are so wicked jesus said one of the signs he says before the coming of god it shall be like the days of noah that means there will be a repeat of this again these spirits in an unusual way will multiply wickedness but the hope is that the power of god too and the assistance from heaven will also be multiplied upon the saints that means that the revivals that are coming you will see dimensions of the spirit at work in a man that you have never seen in church history spirit so accidents don't just happen no you are just driving and then the car just veers off my brother the car did not just veer off a spirit attempting in frustration to either kill you don't feel bad don't feel bad whether that happened to your loved ones so that's why god is teaching us a pastor can have a ministry and when the ministry wants to rise because he's ignorant of this that spirit can enter him and all of a sudden you will find out that is five months of intense hatred from members they will hate you for no cause and the ministry dies less satan should take an advantage of me demons can enter people demons can enter homes they can enter churches when they enter they execute the will of satan you can be born again they will not touch your spirit but i guarantee you they will come to your mind and build a fortification around your mind and still feel safe as though they were in your spirit so that your being born again makes no difference as far as you are concerned this is the mystery behind these things so you see them in your sleep when you wake when you sleep and you wake up and read like i shared with you ah we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness and you don't know who to tell you are sad 
good things want to happen these wicked spirits come in let me tell you progress and breakthrough is not very difficult it's the spirits that make it so hard you are near your breakthrough like this do you know these spirits can relocate your destiny helper just so that you will suffer while men slept the enemy came with his seed and planted it don't feel embarrassed that when you look at your life you see the outworkings of these seeds because i don't know if we have that time now if we don't have it we'll do part four at after the miracle service no problem i don't just want to rush this you have to appreciate this for me to teach you the dimensions of deliverance because casting out a spirit is only one of the dimensions of deliverance if you stop there you didn't do well because the spirit will return are we together if i push this door open and i leave that door open am i still safe please talk to me that spirit for sure will come back their determination to return to you was not left as a secret in the bible the bible is very clear about the fact that if a demon leaves you it will try to come back that's why you find out that people can be free for 10 years from poverty and then 17 years the spirit now comes he says it's been a while let me come back a man can be married loves his wife after she gives him three or four children and then all of a sudden what he was doing when he was 20 21 comes back when he's 41 that's why you find out that a man loves god and is walking passionately and then before you know it when he's age 55 he will go back into a gay lifestyle or do something and you are wondering at 55 the american nation ignored this satan proposed a doctrine to the west that exited the issue he, he just created a safe zone for himself in our teachings notice that satan didn't remove everything he just found the hardest part of it and created a theology that keeps him safe and look at the result today listen hold on guys let me tell you this listen to me I have been a victim of these things that I'm telling you. If you don't conquer this thing, you will never last. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's the reason why it looks like no matter, no matter how you do well, oh, um, there's no cause in my life. I am free. I don't have any, no devil. Don't talk about any cause to me. The spirit will just keep quiet and be watching you. And all of a sudden, the same way it took your father and rubbished his life, took your mother and rubbished her life, you will suddenly find out that you got married. You find out that you got married. Watch this. And all of a sudden, you will become a replica of your father. A replica. Remember, it started with your father slapping your mother. He said sorry once. Then he did it again. The third time he said, I won't say sorry again. I will give you a dirty slap. I paid your dowry. Now, because you thought you were a pastor, it will leave you just like that. And then you keep managing it for a while. And then after nine years, the demons will make sure it bites you where it is hard. And you turn and give her a slap and find yourself. And two of you will sit down and counsel yourself. Say it will never happen. And before you know it, you would have done it many times. I'm not telling you this to show you how powerful Satan is. I'm only giving you a sense of appreciation because deliverance is possible and complete deliverance is possible. If complete deliverance does not happen to you, you will never possess your possession. Believe me. Believe me. This is the Bible. Obadiah 1.17. Please give it to us. The sons of Jacob will possess. It is their possession. But there is a mystery. Are you seeing why many of our parents just said don't worry i will get the job for 25 years they didn't get any other job 25 years no other job no lifting what of the families where women are the ones who feed the men if you are a man and you ever try to rise up 
those horns will squash you down when mommy called me sorry to just make reference to her i saw her text the fact that i don't reply your text doesn't mean i don't look at it when i saw her text i knew immediately what was wrong i knew that they were controlling powers that have followed the life of this dear young man i prayed for him here before he left and i knew that if god does not help this man you will be surprised that one day are you seeing why people go abroad for 10 years and return back like thieves you don't hear from them from a long time you think they built houses they are coming to give you money they return back in shame they start moving from country to country through deserts to arrive in lagos when the young man sent me a text i looked at it somebody gave you a job and people don't just change their mind when things just change suddenly just know that the spirit just came in the same way if it can change for the positive i hate you but i just change you know that ah this is the holy spirit the holy ghost has stepped in the man and i called him how are you my friend he said fine i said let's pray i said when i pray for you you are going to get the job father in the name of jesus it's not what i'm saying jesus said go it is what you are standing on it is not just the articulateness of your words it is the office and the revelation that backs you so you can say one word go and the demons don't hear go the demons see all the mysteries that support what you are saying this is what produces result many people think it is in the articulateness of the english i now standing by my left adjure you that you move no, that is grammar my brother demons don't hear grammar the revelation when jesus said go go is not enough to take demons away it was the rock that he was standing on two houses were built it is the rock you are standing on he said this is how i will build my church you will not just speak it is what you are speaking on that supports your results when i prayed for that gentleman i just dropped the phone i knew what would happen because all i did you would think it is me that produced the result i know what to tell the holy spirit i know the factor that must be introduced in that equation i knew that except the angel of the lord comes to rescue and because they are always ascending and descending they confirm the words of his messengers all i did was to create space for the holy spirit let there be space for you in this equation and all of a sudden he steps in and i don't know how many hours i don't think it was up to three hours you see mommy dancing here she's not just dancing for nothing that's why you hear somebody say i just came for koinonia and things the things didn't just change god will examine your equations and see how you threw him out and just say okay let me be introduced here and all of a sudden things change things change i will stop here so that we'll pray after miracle service i will teach you now on casting out devils and i'll teach you deliverance through transformation and the discipline of conformity all of this will come in let's do part four let's not rush this thing i want us to take some time hold on before you stand up to take some time to pray it is not a secret that these demons are around they use all kinds of ways to enter your life and the flesh is their greatest access you are alone in the room and you are hearing sounds bam ceiling window looks like it's opening they are looking for an access point how can i make this person fear and doubt the faithfulness of god so that i can find expression in his life you are just hearing like wind is blowing all of a sudden you imagine somebody has to be near me and then anger have you noticed that every time good things are coming a good relationship a brother just comes just at the point he's about to propose that week something dangerous happens you are at your angriest point and the brother says no i can't marry you then you return back these are the spirits playing on the minds of the saints messing up our breakthroughs the day you are supposed to go for a job interview you are running then your car breaks down your car didn't have any business breaking down but it broke down 
as soon as you arrive there they say sorry the gate is closed so you stand there and say life not life spirits spirits my brother spirits they are about to pay your father his gratuity the demons will hook the money until the day they diagnose him of having cancer that will spend 150,000 for chemotherapy and the rest then the money suddenly comes and because you have to use it to spend it and spend it and spend it and spend it how about students that enter the exam hall they thought they went alone you conduct tutorials for others and enter the exam hall as soon as you sit down you look at the paper but i solved this question yesterday night what happened these demons hijack your understanding when you are out of the exams you go back and see the paper in your house that you solved it with sometimes you're on your way to the exam to write your final year exam and you forget one question paper in your pocket you didn't forget you were assisted to leave it there all of a sudden an invigilator comes and says, what is that stand up and said no that's it you are going listen to what i'm telling you because god delivered me myself it will be impossible to be doing ministry at this level just talking and saying this i am a product of the deliverance that happens upon mount zion there are people there is no good thing you give them that blesses them give them money it will be the reason for their trouble help them give them favor they will cause trouble our loved ones may be like that for many years the church has been deceived and misled into thinking everything is just normal into thinking oh everything is fine i am okay just because we have some little money we allow the devil fool us into believing that we are all right the devil can allow you to continue being a preacher keep winning uh, the the loss keep healing the sick while he hijacks your mind and continues to do what he's doing at age 12 you see your son already reproducing you and you are saying my god what is this brothers and sisters i tell you the truth by the authority of the word of god i know that i'll be criticized by many people for these teachings but let me tell you this I was called into the office of an apostle listen i share with you a mystery that will help you to possess your inheritance i will not lie to you and sit you down and allow the devil tear your life into pieces let this deliverance be perfected in you you will you will be shocked at the things that will happen you're already hearing testimonies job will become child's play everything will become child's play barrenness stories there are many of us who would have been in ministry by now the call of god is upon you you know the call of god is upon you but these spirits won't let you rest they are all around you they will make sure that every helper god brings to your life you do something to them that drives them against you that's why some of us don't have friends it's not like you are bad the moment a friend comes to your life wonderful person oh I, I i love you i want to help you the spirits will make something happen you will betray the person you will lie against the person you will do something stupid that will kill your opportunity and all of a sudden they will leave you but tonight brothers and sisters the devil is a liar i don't know if there's someone here who is tired who is saying enough is enough i can't let this happen if you are free your loved ones are not free so in any case there is something for you to do
not yet taught you next the next time we meet when we now start talking of deliverance we are going to look at the deliverance ministry of jesus just jesus leave paul leave this just jesus and we are going to see what jesus did with this spirit and you will see that jesus said this kind go it not there is a kind you don't just generically tell demons go no there are different spirits the way you drive a fallen angel from influencing a life is not the same way you cast out a demon now the fallen angels may be illegal occupants but the demons are legal occupants they came by birth the women gave their wombs freely so they are not just run no they have a right This kind goeth not. This kind goeth not. This kind goeth not. Listen, I shared with you during the prayer and fasting. Remember that there is a physical, atmospheric temperature that drives demons by itself. Not um, there is a there is a physical. There are places on earth that demons cannot stay. There's no preacher there. The environment itself drives them. It's in your, it's in your, it's in your Bible. That when a demon leaves a man, it goes through where dry regions, dry regions, hoping it will find something dry that it and, and not finding any. It's uncomfortable and it comes back. Who casted it from that place? Nobody preached with it. It left that place and preferred to come and fight you than to remain in the wilderness. Listen, witchcraft was a proposition that these spirits brought to men. Men are not so smart to know that you, you should kill somebody. There are wicked people from where we come from that will exchange the life even of their children for themselves. Have you seen old people who don't die? Every time they are sick, you hear that someone is dead and then they, they are alive. All of a sudden, they become fine. No, sir. Read in the Bible, a king who slew his son to keep his own life. Ah, uh -uh. nobody will bring a knife to my neck to keep it. Ah, we are going to pray. It's just going to be praying in tongues now. I want you to find a corner, my brother, my sister. Take your life serious. In the next five minutes, instrumentalists just charge the atmosphere for us. Blast in tongues and refuse upon Mount Zion. And it shall come to pass in that day. And it shall come to pass in that day. In that day. In that day. That the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder. And the yoke from off your neck. And it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Please pray, pray. If you are tired, hold the hands of somebody that can agree with you. Pray for your destiny. Pray. Enough is enough, oh God. The victory of Christ, the work of Jesus on the cross, cannot be in vain. The substitutionary sacrifice of the Son of the Living God cannot be in vain. Jesus. 
Sotto Paruta, Ebracato Shabara Capaya da Maravas, Sato Sole de Tevereca. Pray, Koinonia. Pray for your family. Pray for your wife. Pray for your husband. Pray for your children. Arise, oh God. This is Bethel. This is Bethel. This is Bethel. Arise, oh God of Bethel. Pray. Pray. Shabbatos, Shabbat. Lekatos, Kabbalatos. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. It's time to break grounds in the spirit. It's time for the anointing of your destiny to come. It's time for the ministry to open. It's time for your finances to come. It's time for prophecy to find expression. Hello, him Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. This prayer is a serious prayer. As we pray, sisters, I want you to lay your hands on your womb. As we are praying, brothers, just pray in tongues. I'd like you to declare that no seed of any entity that is not of God will find, I will not give birth to any stranger. No. Pray. No matter the ordinances of the fathers, no matter the enchantments of the ancient, I come by a new order and I declare my womb will produce that seed of the woman that will bruise the head of the serpent. I cause five broy. I cause five broy. Cause every devil. Shabatata. Shakatakatakata. Lekatakate. Man brakos koto perekete. E shekadegadegadegadegade. Rapakato perekete liata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Brothers, I'd like you to pray. The spirit that keeps men in one place. You don't move forward. You don't move backward. You stay. No productivity. Every gentleman here, open your mouth and blast in tongues. Father in the heavens, this is better. Shabbat Katoskata. The yokes, the altars, and everything that tie my life, that tie my destiny, by the mystery of deliverance, I challenge. I challenge. It is upon Mount Zion. The spirits that cause failure. Hallelujah. Listen. Demons came into being when the spirit assisted men. 
so your victory comes into being when the spirit assists you it says i am the god of Bethel. i have seen the oppression that laban has done the victory will not just happen forget about the physical things in the realm of the spirit you are going to cry for divine assistance I provoke the ministry of angels over every affair of my life. Lift your voice and pray. Cry. Are they not ministering spirits? Are they not ministering spirits? My brothers and sisters, are they not ministering spirits? Send to minister for them that be the heirs of salvation. I call for assistance from heaven. Oh God of Jeshurun, the helper of men, the lifter of men, the helper of men, the lifter of men, the deliverer. Shaka Katawa. Angels on assignment. Angels on assignment. Angels on assignment. Angels on assignment. Judging the wicked. Delivering the prophecy of God concerning my life. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Every attribute of the flesh that gives access to any spirit in my life by the mystery of the blood, I declare that that door is closed forever. Lift your voice and pray. Come on. Lift your voice and pray. still pray I tell you I feel fire in this place listen everything God has shown you either as a revelation from his word or as a revelation from the realm of the spirit you are going to declare Jacob did not just see the spotted calves and left them in the realm of the spirit they had to come and interact the word must become flesh I like you to lift your voice and cry Jacob's Katabata. Every anointing, every mantle, every mandate, every dimension, the prophetic, the apostolic, prosperity, increase, speed, deliverance that God has shown me. Lord, you showed me victory. I declare, I declare, I declare, it must find expression.
This prayer we are going to pray, listen carefully. Whether you are an usher or not, please. If anyone is under the anointing or manifesting around you, just help them. Are we together? It's a very serious prayer we are going to pray now. You are going to pray that if by any means there is any spirit entity in my life or around me, it's time for you to come out. It's time for you to go. Listen. As you pray this prayer, many strange things will start happening to you. Don't worry about it. You just focus on this prayer and pray with all your heart and watch what happens. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ that any spirit entity finding expression in my mind in my body around my life hear the word of the Lord I cast you out of my life now lift your voice and pray pray fire is falling pray fire is falling Shabakatata. I cast every spirit. I cast every devil. I cast every spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost. My mind, my body, around my life, around Koinonia, in the name of Jesus, around my family. Shamakatos Kadabash. You are married also pray for your family pray for your children i cast every devil The Lord is healing fibroid. Now, the Lord is ministering to me. A mighty deliverance is going to happen now. It's starting with ladies. Any spirit entity that comes in the form of a man and attempts to oppress you in the night, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, 
let the fire from heaven fall right now and command i command that spirit to go help them right now any spirit entity using the face of anyone to molest you and close doors inside outside i command deliverance now i command deliverance now let the daughters of jacob possess their possession in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i'm hearing in my spirit uncontrolled anger it's a spirit it's living people right now uncontrolled anger is it's an unusual anger rage it comes you can see anything and you can do anything i'm seeing fire in the name of jesus anyone who is a victim of this operation right now in the name of jesus i bring you deliverance i bring you deliverance by the power of the holy ghost uncontrolled anger i come against it now Please help her. I'm seeing a vision, and the Lord is asking me to pray on that case. In this vision, I'm seeing someone dream that's what i'm seeing now and in that dream you keep seeing yourself going back either to your old house or to a primary school or writing an exam you are finished it's a strong spirit of delay i stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace help your wife right now in the name of jesus at the count of three the spirit of delay hear the word of the lord let god's people go now one two three i command that spirit go now go now please help them go now this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind no devil should take you back again I command that spirit go now I cast that spirit now ya bone na ka so jana de na ka sar ke sara if there is anyone you know whether you are here or anyone you know that for some reason has not been able to take in in the name of barrenness whether you are here or you are standing for them i want you to agree i want to pray let's see the devil that will stop them from taking in in the name of jesus anyone you know and you are standing for that the devil i don't care what the medical report is that the devil has come to make sure that they will not celebrate children in the name that is above all names we release children from heaven in the name of jesus we release children from heaven we open every barren womb in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the lord is showing me a group of people you see you have dreams frequently and in the dreams you see yourself receiving things and it's something that in the physical you are hoping to receive but the moment you see it in that dream it will never happen again it's an irony it's like the opposite of what you see in dreams is what happens the lord is asking me to deliver those people now please help her help her just stand near your wife so that she doesn't have to fall right now in the name of jesus in the name that is above all names i decree and declare from the realm of the spirit let there be deliverance for you now let there be deliverance for you now
just two more points and we're done look at me if you have seen this pattern i'm about to describe in your family then i want you to listen carefully it's always that the future is worse than the past you never have a situation where you leave certain things and go higher and higher you look at all your loved ones they once worked they once married they once had children they once had a house you are in a situation where the future is never brighter than the past it's always once upon a time this was happening i need to crush that devil from your life please help them once upon a time i was rich once upon a time i was married once upon a time i was on fire for god once upon a time i was a pastor i had a church no the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth ever brighter unto the perfect day when your tomorrow becomes worse than your yesterday there is a spirit reversing the equation lift your hands i want to pray for you in the name that is above all names i declare that any force from hell that is responsible for aborting a glorious tomorrow to take the events of the past and still bring it into your tomorrow right now at the count of three i declare that spirit must let you go one two three let them go now let them go now by the anointing of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please just be patient with me we'll end now my spirit is heavy circles of repeated sicknesses i want to pray now it's not a normal thing whether it is hepatitis whether it is a blood related disease or whether it is every month malaria every month malaria every month typhoid you treat it it still comes back every month headache every month whatever it is hold on please the lord is showing me something i just saw like a pile of money and then i saw it disappear and the lord said there are people money physically disappears like lives their life i'm not saying you waste it you can keep ten thousand and come back and find seven thousand and nobody was in that house it's not just money items you can wash clothes and hang it you you didn't steal it you will come back you will not find it listen well this is a, a deliverance series just allow me to help that lady I'm seeing a lady in a vision now you were alone you washed your underwear in the night by the next day you didn't find two of them again it's gone from that day something happened in your life in a strange way severe menstrual pain is one of the things you started having uncontrollable pain in the name of jesus everything the devil has taken from anyone i decree and declare by the anointing of the spirit let there be restoration now let there be restoration now let there be restoration now The Lord is showing me someone. Every time you see someone die in the dream, a few weeks later it will happen physically. Now you have seen your loved ones. You saw them last week. You saw like a, somebody was announcing to you that I don't know if it's your mother or something that died. If we don't pray for you, it's going to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? I prophesy right now upon your life by the anointing of the Holy Ghost I command that death to pass over your family I command that death to pass over your family Hallelujah 
just just let me just talk about two issues i'm struggling to share what god is showing me now this has to do with a group of ladies listen there is a lady here every time you see yourself in a dream you are a man not a woman that's why i'm struggling to share what i'm saying physically you are a lady but every time you see yourself in a dream it's like you are carrying the form of a man this thing has affected you even in the area of relationship if a guy looks at you and says i love you it's like it's like um it's it's like you feel as if you are gay it's, it's like something has numbed the capacity to receive love as a lady because of that encounter it's a demonic thing that i have to pray for you for a very demonic thing i'm seeing like smoke this is strange and then it is it's just like moving around in the air wherever those groups of people are i don't believe it's just one person it's an operation of darkness in the name of jesus i stretch my hands right now and i decree and declare by the power of the holy ghost be free from that demonic siege now be free from that demonic siege now ah, hold on there is a lady a physical person appeared to you not a dream i'm not talking of your dreaming physically physical like you are seeing me like this appeared to you and was having a conversation with you appeared to you and was having a conversation with you and from that conversation your life was never the same again it looked like it was a woman that was appearing and talking to you like revealing to you some secrets that had to do with the past and from that day you started hearing voices even in the afternoon you can sit down and hear like people are discussing i need to pray for you if i don't pray for you very soon they will admit you in the hospital because they'll say you are talking and behaving like somebody who has a psychosomatic condition wherever that person is in the name of jesus i may not call you out because of time but i declare right now by the anointing of the holy spirit that devil that spirit in the name of jesus be free from it now i was going to pray for repeated cycles of sickness let that be the last let's pray if you know in this place that you find out that certain sicknesses never leave you they keep repeating cycles just place your hand on your chest i'm about to pray it doesn't matter what part of your body and what sickness you just place your hand on your chest i'm going to pray someone will shout under the anointing when that happens the anointing for this healing is not a sickness it's a pattern that god is breaking now the moment that shout happens i will rebuke that and then we are done for the night we will continue the miracle service i'll talk about it shortly thank you jesus just lay your hands there the power of god is looking for one person there's somebody that will shout that's the shout right now in the name of jesus by the anointing of the holy spirit every pattern of reoccurring infirmity reoccurring sickness whether it's a blood related disease every pattern i say it again of reoccurring sickness reoccurring disease right now by the power of the holy ghost i command the spirit responsible lose your hold now 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 hallelujah 
There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion. The lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left. Only one ear and two legs. That was all that was left. Yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb. What will you do with one ear and two legs? Eating the intestines, eating all of this. But in the realm of the spirit, it is not what left you that is the issue. It is what you have left. What you have left is a sign that God is still interested in restoration. That's why everything did not go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting. Oh God, this one left me. A relationship left you but your health is still with you. That health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship. Your job left you but your praise did not leave you. That praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job. Are you getting the, the way this thing works? There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. Listen, let me repeat myself. There is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost. You had a miscarriage and you are crying and saying, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad. But by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use your health as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice. Someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said, Lord, just protect this guy. And God said, that son that you gave as a seed, I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them. Whenever you are afraid of losing things, you open the door for losses. That which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest though. And gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started gradually until it got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshipped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense 
demons that I have. The demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I saw it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right. All of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places, but let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach, but can you use your mouth as the seeds to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all your prayers. I lost my job lost my wife, lost my children, I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that will bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. So why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will it come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I've not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and co were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job kept listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, this is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration engaging the prophetic specifically prophetic utterances let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight isaiah 42 verse 22 please give it to us media isaiah 42 verse 22 but this is a people robbed and spoiled all of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non it, for a spoil. And there is no advocate that prophesies to them, restore. For you to ever experience restoration, there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life. The prophetic, the prophetic. Either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Without an encounter with a prophetic grace, a prophetic office, or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God, there is no restoration. It's impossible. Second scripture, Psalm 119 verse 49. I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an amplified. 
I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me breakthrough. I believed it. And he said, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyedipo. So there is, it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen. And anybody and anything that came out of Abraham. A sad story later happened. And then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God had the voice of the young lad. A child is crying. The mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven. Because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you. It's not God's concern whether it was a mistake or not. He is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember. The last scripture. Second Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7, just two scriptures. Second Kings, chapter 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said tomorrow. About this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. In the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow. Was not something God revealed to the prophet. And said that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date. When that land will be delivered. Listen. This is not revelation. It didn't say God revealed to me. In other words I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady. Who goes to her room and sees piles of money. Physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This
this prophet was not creating this prophet i mean he was not revealing he was creating he says look i understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates the realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them it takes the prophetic to appoint dates that's why through the prophetic ministry you can go into five years ago pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen you have to believe this otherwise how does God restore years are we together now time is only subject to this realm the realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen so there are events that represent the will of God there are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel but there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints such as your miracle today it's not God that decided that today will be your miracle you would have chosen to remain at home Jesus was passing a city called Nain are we Bible students it was never his plan to raise any dead body he was minding his business he was not on evangelism and he saw people crying and then he said what's going on here and they said there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft her husband that dead her only son dead and jesus said wait a minute bring down that coffee there and then he decided the destiny of that woman brothers and sisters hear me this issue of one day one day is faithlessness you can insist the bible said today if you hear his voice you can choose and say lord today today i'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle you believe that say amen listen you are the only one who continues to progress in time the realm of the spirit does not progress in time the time is bare are we together now so in the realm of the spirit you don't there's no such thing as past and present with god so when you say god remember five years ago you said you would do something and you did not do it god said it doesn't make any difference it can still happen and you say lord but i'm older now god says and so i can readjust it to still fit the older you lord you gave me a word that i will marry at 21 i'm 35 and god says no problem i can't do it lord i plan to have six children god says it doesn't make any difference six years two two years with twins my word has come to pass lord you said you would prosper me but this has not happened i would have gotten a job how much was the salary that time Twenty thousand. how much would you have had now 1.2 god says i give you an idea that brings you 2.4 in one month Listen. please you have to believe what i'm telling you otherwise we're wasting our time here is powerful it can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest you've seen this happening going on here somebody will write jam for instance and have 160 something and all of a sudden a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something how do you explain that someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone on question one and then comes and the word comes and result comes out and is in 4.8 how oh, please brothers and sisters we are intelligent people but we are also spiritual never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life the same way you are seated here and say apostle can god do it brothers and sisters he can look at my life look at this ministry the word of god can god cure that sickness yes he can i repeat yes he can can god turn around my captivity some of you are not sick but what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem god can still turn it around god can turn it around 
in the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress time for people. Call back things. Please believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. Ha! He said, Rejoice not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, Locate the power of prophecy locate the power of prophecy some of you didn't want to come tonight you can come and still look and say wow what an interesting service or you can come and say lord it is within your power to change this situation why should we pro prolong it it's within your power it's within your power you've seen the testimonies we never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. No matter what is wrong with your life, your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed and something happened. You can't tell what it is, but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help, my help. My mother has died. I'm an orphan. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life. pregnant now I'm seated here and my baby cannot even move he's there just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes I believe God I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation he will always be like the Lord will perfect that concerning jobs are finished. A job is not with any government. A job is in the word of God. Listen to me. Don't cry. No. Stop that tears. It's a weak not. When the book is open, tears will stop. God didn't gather you here. Some of you traveled so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. able to restore and let me tell you something God can restore fast he can restore fast 430 years in captivity one night God said that's all 
when God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to lift David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I ju he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. lost my joy, can come back. I've lost my peace, can come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch him wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't waste our time here. We are going to be very fast. The message is already complicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you. Please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call me.
you something with prophecy. The prophetic is very powerful. You can be acting, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm not just moving here. It is within the power of God. I have done this little crazy, foolish prophetic act. It's time for those who this word, you see, this thing I've done. Hold on, please. I'm not everybody. There are a few people as I've done this now. The Lord is asking me to do it three more times. As I do this three more times, if this, God will restore people. But it's not everybody that is using this prophetic act to restore. If you belong to that category as I'm turning the third time, that anointing, that grace, when it hits you, just know that God is restoring you. Just know that God is restoring you.
what God is doing. Let's just flow with the Spirit. Literally, there are some of you, you are going to feel a wind blow around you. And a garment is like a change of women. And he showed me Joshua the high priest. And he was standing. And Satan wanted to rain an accusation. And he said, is this not a rod that I've taken from out of fire? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, all those that God is changing their garment,
ones who came before. A past job, a past breakthrough, a past wife, a whatever it is, has stopped many people from moving forward. Every time you see success, it looks like the way you rejoiced yesterday before failure came. So you are even afraid of it. No. No. You were given 500,000 and you went and bought goods for your business. Then it crashed. Now God sends a helper. He's giving you 500,000. Instead of receiving it, he's reminding you of yesterday's failure and you are afraid. You are afraid of embracing your future because you think it will look like your past. In the name of Jesus Christ, I once again separate you from your past. serious prayer. I want you to believe this. There are people here as they are standing. Believe me when I say nothing is working. There are some, some aspects are working. We are still coming there. But the Lord is asking me to address issues. Some of you as you are standing here inside and outside, online if you will be honest with yourself, nothing is working. From marriage to finance to job to academics to life to health, everything is down. I want to pray for you. Everyone lift your hands. The truth is you, you won't know it's the prayer that will tell you because you may think things are working. I want to pray for you. Inside and outside, especially overflow too. The one and the other. I'm just seeing rings of fire. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this category of people that nothing is working for. Some of you represent your families. Right now, in the name of Jesus, may that fire come upon you now and bring you breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing is working. I cause it. I cause the spirit. I cause the power. I cause the influence that is making this happen. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. It's a very serious prayer. I'm still praying. Nothing is working. It's not like you are not moving. But it works for others till it gets to your tongue. Simple things that should open up, don't open up. Right now in the name of Jesus, I direct an auction to your life and destiny. And I command you now, in the name of Jesus, by the ministry of the Spirit, be free from this evil. Be free from this evil. There is a family and the family people are here. I stretch my hands. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. You see, brothers and sisters, these are the things that stop you from experiencing results. My brother, come. You. Your salvation has come. Come and stand here. I'm going to pray for you. Look at me. Hold on. This is your first time coming here. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit. You belong to this category I'm talking about. Nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State? Yes, Where are you from? Ondo, Ondo State. Ondo is what? This is what I'm saying. Akure or Ondo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes. And because I'm 
I've seen a car, and that's where you are coming from. Where are you coming from now? That's what I'm saying. The Lord is going to change your life totally right now. Who is Lake Up? Section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are laid up. I'm going to pray for you. Oh, is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or Augustus. Something that has been Augustus. Augustus or something. Augustus. I'm hearing like Augustus, please. We have to finish fast because we have to pray for the city. Augustus. Change the story. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. My brother, you don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you something, Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around. It's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here. Where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. See, hold on. Who is this one? She's my sister too. This is your sister. Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Canada. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Sir. Is that true? Yes, Where sir. is she? She's in Kano. She's in Kano. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. You are a sincere person. Now what do you do? I'm a banker, sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you so that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes, is yes, that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for You're you. Correct, sir. You're August. Correct, sir. That's You're what correct, stand up. That's what You're they correct, told sir. you. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you, and I don't know how your mother got to know me, but your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. I'll 
pray for you, sir. Huh? Because people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. You need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You are a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting there. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon you. Ugechuku. Is it Ugechuku or Ugechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. I want everybody to look at this brother very well, know his face, because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Ugochuku or Ugochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand, your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with attention carefully. Federal Medical Center. Yes, careful. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been doing that. I was together in your program. In soup, two days program, you came at Kev. Oh, was you were there at the, at yes, the meeting. For you were part of the committee people yeah, there. Yeah. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace. I activate your spirit, man, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, you will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said I should bless you. The Lord said I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Hi. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. is coming. You wore something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Kemi State. Kemi State. I'm going to pray for you. He said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. The power of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, may the God that I serve lift you. May the God that I serve honor you. Your helper is in Abuja. Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is someone you are from Zuru. Zuru is in Kebi. Zuru Shabala Katabalata. Come and receive your miracle, my dear. Come. Come on, carelessly. You are from where? Why are you here? sound of a child and the Lord is saying a child should come now two years two years two years where is the person come call the person's name now no children two years no children we are going to pray she's not here this is your son is the one here in the okay you standing for them mama why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now, she will come back and testify here with the child? I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You believe. What's her name? Her name is Adama Issa. Adama. Adama. In the name of Jesus, become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, the medium. This is the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Peter. Peter. In the name of Jesus, I declare you are blessed. Mama, the pain you feel in your back sometimes. Diabetes. Hold on. Ulcer. I will pray for you. You have fibroid. Yes. You have diabetes. Yes. You have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is? Fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this. Then her own children. Barrenness. Then this one. There's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You are you that you are the gentleman. There's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Huh? Is that true, Mama? Okay. Repeating, repeating, repeating. 
That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. brother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You have been repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let me end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit to have the mind of Christ. Right now, over. It is over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Husband. Yes. We were from Plato State, but we live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. In Aike, she made it. Yeah, no, Kano. We have to pray for him because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. He may not tell me. This is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad that diabetes, fibroid, and um, and and ulcer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this guy. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. A loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It goes now. Never to be told. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Before we pray for the sick, I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, one under the influence of any spirit. Please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverances happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. I command you to leave now. Go now. Go now. Tonight, in the name of 
Jesus and I stretch my hands towards you. If there is anyone inside, outside, under the sound of my voice, who is a victim of the speakings of altars, I command them to die now in the name of Jesus. I cause those altars, they cease from functioning. I cause those altars in the name of Jesus. for one lady here, don't be embarrassed. You used to see physical rings on your hand. Physical rings, then it will disappear. Who is that? There's someone here like that. Please, quickly, let me pray for you. Don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for you. The Lord just gave me a revelation. Sometimes you look at your hand and you will see, you think it's a dish of rings, like ring on your hand. You started seeing it in your dreams, but now, physically, sometimes you see it. Whether the person is inside or outside, except if they are under the anointing. But please, I would like to pray for that person as we pray for the sick. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. It's a very serious thing I need to pray for you. This, this madam, come. This lady, the lady wearing lime, come. I want to pray for you. Witchcraft comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a small child within the ages of maybe 1 to 11. Now as I'm praying, the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting. I'm seeing this is, this is some demonic, diabolic thing. I'm not saying the child is bad. I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me. Father, wherever this child is, I pray for our children now. Whether it is an initiation, whether it is anything occultic, I'm, I decree and declare right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever that little child is, I command those devils to live now. I command those devils to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command those devils to live now. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother the power of God is going to come on him now, overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. The fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point now. While we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember, I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now, watch this, please. Overflow one, all the overflows, those who are sick in body, I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and 
over your family to be broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now um, I know there are many people here there is a gentleman please I don't do these things to disgrace me but there is a gentleman here addicted to taking you know you always hear me say that thing what's the name of that thing that codeine but your own is not just codeine alone it's plus whether smoke um some of these funny things you are here and you are tired of it but you cannot stop please where are you please don't waste our time there's a gentleman that i need to pray for seems to me like that person is outside inside please if you are here don't be embarrassed i want to help you end this i know there are many people but there is a specific person god is talking to me about let's just flow as the holy spirit is talking please that gentleman i want you to come out here and i want to lay my hands and end it you are tired of it but you can't stop no matter what you do that's what you spend your little money on and this thing is crashing your life and destroying your destiny where are you let's appreciate him said he who does not have sin should cast the first stone when we call people like this we don't condemn people i love you with all my heart the meaning of my name is the way to love i love people you look at this gentleman you can see the way their lives are you see how disorganized they are this is the devil if we don't pray for these people this gentleman one day will become a father it doesn't matter i prophecy for one is for all come and join them i want to pray for you now Please, one minute. If you are, if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, "Man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me quickly. Join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. Let, I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia. Apostle, does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them. still coming let's give them one more minute since God is already talking to them now let's just take advantage of the anointing here apostle I don't take it all the time still join them you take it the most important thing is that you take it even if it's not all the time you take it join them and let God help you look at me brothers and sisters I'm your friend I love you with all my heart like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody took got them into all of these things just by themselves some of them had dreams some of them had strange encounters but my bible says god bless you don't be ashamed come and join please give them room honestly let's let's let this happen let's let this happen let's let this happen if you are joining come the bible says for this purpose for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he may destroy that this this you see this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing you carry cough syrup snuff it till you are almost dying pass out and come back again and still do it 
and then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it, and all of that. Look at me. I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only, we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain. Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now listen, let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of, of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere and it will destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details. We we'll forward it to the um, prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we're helping you. Some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is nobody, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. Causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. If I've not touched you, just let me know and I'll lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil to leave you. I cause you are standing in for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. In, hold on, don't go. Ah, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say Amen. Pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let them be a dissociation between you and them. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman. Bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. You need guidance and mentorship. There is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is still in the call, we cause it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self time in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every challenge in my life 
must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are sick in body, I want you to come. Those who are sick in body, overflow one, two, three, inside. Make your way out. us to bring the healing power of God to people and we are very happy. We will continue to do it. Some of you are standing for your loved ones. God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it. Now, please look up. We are going to do two things very quickly. Um, overflow 1, you can go to your projector stand. Overflow 2, your projector stand. Overflow three and every other one four, just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we are going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Ejimi will be outside, Overflow 1. Pastor Ejimi and Pastor Femi, Overflow 1, he's going to be praying. Pastor Alpha, you'll go to Overflow 2. Um, together with Mike, Mike, you'll follow him, Overflow 2. Overflow 3, Benga, and Promise. Two of you will be at Overflow 2 and uh, Overflow 3 and any other Overflow day. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We declare and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. In the name of Jesus Christ, anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you will help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen. Please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. In the name of Jesus. faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone we are constrained by time and um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith. Believe it. Believe it. I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. They will still have more. Please 
those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles. God of one. Jabala. Let the angel of the Lord spread. Now arise, so in the name of Jesus those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer they are delivered from death those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer they are declared a success Lord turn around age long captivities you declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration. I prophesy that anointing upon this request. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be strange restorations right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to pray for you. This is the last segment. I want us to connect. Our time is gone. We'll do this very quickly. Please lift your hands as I pray for you. That which God gives us, it is our joy to always dispense it to the people. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I decree and declare right now every dry book, every dry situation, every hopeless situation in your life, receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called dead in your life, dead finances. Dead relationships, dead career lives. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of restoration. I prophesy, let it come back to life now. I prophesy, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue. 
issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus let tonight be the last night you will see it let tonight be the last night you will see it he said these Egyptians that you see today you will see them no more forever I command that you see them no more forever in the name of Jesus Christ every door that is supposed to have opened up to you and we don't know why it has refused to open till now in the name of Jesus at this June miracle service I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you. For those who are asking God for direction for the next level, beginning from tonight, receive encounters that give you direction. Those outside, make sure you are connecting. Receive encounters that give you direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life every gift that is not yet speaking every grace that is you is still dormant within you whether spiritual gift or physical gifts i decree and declare right now locked up on anyone here that has not found expression I decree and declare life to your gift life to your ability in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. I want to pray for you there are many people here you are not working in spiritual gifts Paul said I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established I stretch my hands to you out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy something is coming upon you now I decree and declare all nine gifts of the spirit revealed in scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three oh God according to the faith of your people let there be a distribution right now one two three take it right now take it right now take it right now take it right now Take it right now. Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards these gifts in the name of Jesus. I declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people. Granting them access to platforms, access to people, access to resources. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that mantle right now. Take that anointing of supernatural favor. I impart it upon your life. I impart it upon your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says, where thou hast been deserted, so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them, please. Every dying business here, come back to life now. In the name of Jesus, every dying destiny here, I command you, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Every dying career, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Whatever has destroyed your prayer life so that your, the fervency of your prayer life has gone down in the name of Jesus I find
found those coals to come back alive. I found those coals of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus. I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the operation of the world receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now i impart upon you the gift of faith let it be yours now in the name of jesus i impart upon you the gift of faith capacity to do impossible things receive that grace in the name of jesus I decree and declare one by one beginning from tonight the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves I command everything that should be in your life and has left you the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark I command you to draw your blessings to your life now your life now listen Noah did not go to look for the animals he just opened the door the same way you have opened the door of your destiny I command I'm saying it again I want you to believe me it doesn't take time it only takes the right word into your life I decree and declare again between now and the next month's miracle service let there be strange testimonies of restoration strange testimonies of restoration whatever has not been working in your life right now whether it's your academics your marriage whatever it is I force it to work now Anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Whether they are here or connected by faith, I command anyone called barren become a joyful mother of children. Become a joyful mother of children. I pray for your finances. Whatever makes this thing hard for you, I curse that spirit now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare illumination, grace to know what to do, and grace to succeed at whatever you do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. For those who are students, whether on campus, the university, or any other campus, I declare, most of you are on break now, you are about to resume. As you resume, in the name of Jesus, I put life to your academics. I command missing scripts to be found. I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected. In the name of Jesus, as you prepare to write your exams, I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. I prophesy like rain. Hear what I'm saying. I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here trusting God for a job? In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next 30 days, may the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes. Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death. There is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death. It always comes like a circle, looms over territory and takes the life of people. I declare, let the seal of the blood 
the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family. In the name of Jesus, let the seal of the blood, the mystery of exemption, be upon you and your family. I cause accidents. I cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you. I command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny I speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers even if they came before I call them again hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.